Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How are you going these days? Suppose you want to know the prices of some certain thing. What are you going to do? Oh yes, you are going to write a letter. What type of letter it is? Yes, it's an inquiry letter or a direct request. And what are you going to ask for? Some information, right? About the, as I just said, about the prices of the product of the company. So this is a seeking information letter. We've been discussing inquiry letters or direct request letter. In our previous lecture, we discuss how we can write inquiry letters that asks for information for both product or services. And beside inquiry let letters, we also discuss some features of direct request letters. Today we are going to discuss another type of uh, direct request letter and this letter is known as persuasive request. Persuasive requests are basically do not aim at buying anything any product or any services of any company or any individual to whom you write. Basically, through these letters, you request for cooperation from any individual or from any organization. Sometimes you write letters for some free gifts. Sometimes you write letter for some uh, some charity. Sometimes you write these letter to seek timings for any purpose. I mean, you want to invite somebody for any charitable program. So all these uh, types of uh, occasion ask you to write letters which form up this basic title that is request, persuasive request. So, very first thing that you need to know and it's obviously clear that the reader will have to be stimulated to take that action that you want him to take. So, for this type of a letter, you will have a certain plan. Begin your letter that interests your reader so that he could be ready to read your letter and accept what you are going to say. So this is very important. Though we have been discussing, when we were discussing the basic plans, organizational plan, that uh, what plan do we choose in such a situation? Obviously, personal, uh, persuasive plan. So this persuasive plan has all the those features, attraction, interest, desire and action. But keeping in view this specific uh, persuasive request, uh, we have to uh, mold our plans according to the situation, right? So when you are going to uh, ask somebody to do some action, to take some action uh, which you want him to take, you, you are going to uh, write your message keeping in view the human psychology uh, with which a person motivates or a person acts. For example, in such letter to create interest in the reader, we can begin our letter with some altruistic appeal or with some reader benefited appeal or some individual responsibility appeal or some personal experience appeal. For example, you can ask somebody to be generous because generosity 
uh, generosity is in an inner emotion of a person and if you uh, if you are successful in in motivating in inciting this appeal in a person the person is going to take that action similarly sometime you start your request letter persuasive request letter with some reader oriented appeal for example you want uh, you want somebody to help you in conducting a survey right and you write this letter to that person to fill in a certain a uh, certain form uh, in which you have asked certain questions so in in the letter you need to tell that what benefit the re reader is going to have after having filled in the form so again there can be any individual uh, any individual benefit that you can uh, give into your letter so there can be a lot of things which can uh, which can be given in such a uh, as in such persuasive request to attract the attention of the reader once you have attract the attention of a reader you can switch on to the next part of the letter so follow through with the reason for the request here you bring the reason why do you want the reader to take that certain action here you need to emphasize an advantage to someone other than the writer for example you are going to collect some charity or you are uh, going to collect some charity and you want the reader to uh, participate in it to send some money uh, to this charity so you need to tell the reader that you are collecting some amount for for example for some uh, as we did uh, last year for some earthquake ridden area or you may tell that you are going to uh, collect some uh, money for children underprivileged children and you want to give them some better education so here you need in this section you need to give to the reader that the action of the reader is going to give benefit to somebody again here compliment the reader i mean in one way tell that you and the other member of your organization and the, and the public in general uh, uh, will uh, look forward to the action that the reader is going to take or they will praise the action of the reader so in this part you just go through with the reason about the action that you want the reader to take in the third part you need to state your request in definite and specific term here you need to tell that what do you want what do you want for example you want the reader to fill in some uh, attached coupon you want the reader to uh, to send you some uh, some check you want the reader to reach at a certain place so here you need to give some specific action you need to motivate the reader to stimulate the reader to some specific action so close your letter with a positive optimistic remarks with a pleasant remark so this uh, uh, this plan will help you in writing persuasive request so you begin your persuasive request by attracting the attention of your reader by using some appeal as i said it may be an altruistic appeal it may be some uh, personal benefit it may be uh, some uh, uh, it may be the benefit of the reader it may be some personal advantage and you follow through the rest of the letter so let's look at a letter of persuasive request which has been written keeping in view all these points so we have this dear residents the welfare society of g block is conducting a survey of our members in an attempt to obtain information which will help in improving the quality of our services and thereby benefiting our worthy members the information received from you will await your reply please return the survey in the enclosed envelope by september 20 so if you look at this uh, letter of persuasive request this request 
has all the qualities of a good persuasive request. It is written in letter and spirit according to that organizational plan that we just discussed. It has attracted the attention of the reader by giving benefit, discussing the uh, reader's ba reader benefit as well as discussing other uh, the benefit of the uh, other people of the area. Then it uh, follows through with the reason in the middle of the uh, middle of the letter. Uh, it also uh, tells the reader that somebody else will benefit from uh, this uh, his action or his action the re action of the reader. And in the end, in the last paragraph, the specific action that the writer wants the reader to take is mentioned very clearly. So this is how normally the uh, persuasive request letter are written. Maybe you change a little bit in, in any letter. It depends on the situation in which you are going to write a, uh, a letter. But you have to uh, use the appeals, any of the appeals in the beginning to attract the attention of the reader. And in the middle of the letter, while explaining, you have to give reason. And in the end, you have to bring the reader to some specific action. So this is how we write persuasive request. So we have been discussing inquiry letters and we have seen different types of inquiry letters or their direct request uh, messages uh, that basically uh, are seeking information. Now we switch over to the letter that answer these inquiries or direct requests. When we are answering these messages, obviously when we are answering these messages if we have yes, the we are going to use a direct plan. In direct plan, we are going to tell right in the beginning that we are going to take the action what our reader wanted us to take. So the good news starts the letter or the main idea has the good news. So then we explain the letter. Normally, answering a inquiry letter Sometimes the letter writer makes certain mistakes and that are that when we as a reader we are reading an inquiry letter, we sometimes overlook the questions which the reader uh, wants us to know or which, are, which he wants us to answer. This is a very common practice and we miss. So, to eliminate uh, this problem and to rectify this problem, we what we can do is whenever we are going to read some inquiry letter, it's better that while reading it, we are underlining the questions, giving them number. So when we are uh, answering these letters, it is always very helpful to uh, answer all the question. Sometimes the questions are clear in the letter, in a listed form, enumerated uh, in, uh, in the letter, and sometimes they are Im embedded in the, uh, in the body of the letter or employed. As good reader of inquiry letter, we need to understand this, uh, uh, the message of our reader and try to answer all the questions uh, that the reader wants us to give him. So, after having gone through this stage, we have to answer the question. Answering the question, we have to think of the plan. What, are, what plan are we going to use this? As I just said, we are going to use normally when we answer, answer inquiry letters in direct uh, organizational plan. Direct organizational plan because we understand that the reader has interest and it is the time to benefit from that interest. So let's look at the plan. Give the exact information requested. So 
say in the beginning, in the first sentence, that you are going to grant the request of the customer. As I just said, that be very careful not to answer the question of your uh, reader. When you are going to grant any request for recommendation or any request for reservation, it's very important that you repeat all the details. Details about day, about the venue, about the uh, timings and everything that is important. And you also, while answering these uh, inquiries, you sometimes need to uh, collect the data. Sometimes you need to give information which, uh, which you have to collect from other sources. So prepare your uh, answers very carefully. When you are quoting some prices, it's better that you double check it. In some cases, you might uh, like to check it from the concern uh, department. So if you are going to uh, make any quotation, it's better that you check your own uh, stocks. So it is very important when you are going to write answers to inquiries. You go through this whole process. You, uh, you check all the facts and figures. You check the information. You check the prices if you are going to quote prices. Uh, uh, and if you are going to send uh, any catalog, any price list, be sure that such things are enclosed so you could mention in your letter. So let's look at a letter which is an answer to a reservation. So you see that how the letter writer has been careful in giving all the details. Dear Mr. Ali, we are happy to receive your registration form and deposit for the 21st Century Marketing Conference to be held April 3 to 7 in Lahore. The Lahore Hilton has set aside a block of rooms at a special discounted rate for conference attendees. The rate is rupees 1000, I'm sure not now, for a single rupees 15 for a double. To make reservation call at this number before April 1, Pakistan Airlines is offering conference attendees up to 40% off the regular fares. To make flight reservation, call number is given and refers to an identification number. So and so. When you arrive at the conference, be sure to register before noon on Monday, April 3, so that you can attend the 1 p.m. special roundtable discussion by market analysis. So, if you look at this letter, this letter gives complete information to the reader. The reader had written to the writer for that reservation because he wanted to attend that conference. So the writer has given all the information to the reader. You see that each and every, every question that might have come to the mind of the reader is answered in the, in this, uh, uh, in this letter. So whenever you are answering inquiry, you are granting information, you have to say yes in the first sentence of the letter and you have to give complete information. You have to answer all the question and as I just told you, it's better that you uh, give number to each question than when you are reading the letter of inquiry. So second thing in this plan is that express appreciation for the inquiry. You must uh, keep, uh, give, a, uh, give a sense of relationship to your reader, to build a sense of relationship with your uh, reader. So you must appreciate the interest of the reader. Tell him that he is welcome and uh, whatever he is uh, asked for, will be answered to him and the company is very ready or the organization is quite ready to answer these questions. So tell the customer either directly or by implication that you are glad he or 
she has written to you about one of your organization's product or services. Write in the spirit of service and goodwill because you have to keep goodwill with your reader. This is very important. Sell your organization or your product. You know, when you get an inquiry letter, the first thing that you should know and must know is that the reader does want to buy your product or have your services. It means that the interest of the reader is very much there. It's quite fresh. But don't you think that if you don't uh, answer it quickly or you delay the answer, uh, the, the, this uh, interest of the reader will certainly weaken. So, you need to put sell into every letter that you write. I mean, you have to write letter in which you are selling your organization to the readers. So, uh, talk about the product and talk about the benefits that the reader is going to have from your uh, letter. As we have these, uh, uh, these TQM and other ISO uh, different certif uh, certification, what they stress on is that they also want us to be reader oriented, customer oriented and they in way help us to, to be a good writer as well because they want us to answer every, in, every inquiry very quickly. So while in writing we should uh, think of the same thing that whenever we have received any inquiry we must answer as early as possible by putting selling into our letters. Then we have to end our letter with a positive closing, with a positive closing with uh, some appropriate offer to give further assistance or with a goodwill closing. So let's look at a letter which is very definite, very clear and has easy reading. Dear Mr. Hassan, Thank you very much for your letter of May 21st in which you request us to send you the latest catalog and price list of our office supplies and equipment. I sent them this morning by a first courier service. The catalog gives complete details of our products. I'm sure you would find them as usual suitable to your requirements. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. So you see that uh, in this answer the writer of the letter has granted the information right in the first sentence of the letter and he has uh, given explanation and ended with a friendly close with a uh, dated or with a stimulation to action remember that whenever you write your messages Keeping in view the organizational plan, you feel them very easy. You answer them quite up to the mark, quite to the, up to the requirement. But if you do not take care of these things, the messages are very, uh, very confused. They are not understandable. They lack clarity. Obviously, when you are uh, thinking of writing any messages, you have to think all the principles of communication which we've been discussing all this time. After uh, discussing, answering uh, how to answer these uh, inquiry letters, let's now look at the other type of uh, answering inquiry which is persuasive request that we just discuss. Whenever you are answering, a, uh, answering to a persuasive request, if you have a yes, you accept the persuasive request, then you are going to begin your letter with some good news. So start your letter with good news and then Repeat the detail 
in explanation and end with a positive close. So, let us look at the plan of it. Start with a cheerful yes. Open your letter with the good news that will make your reader happy. For example, if somebody wrote your letter seeking your time for some seminar and you are ready to go to that seminar. So, begin your letter with the good news saying yes in the beginning. So, you start your letter like this. I will be at the seminar to help in any way I can. The solution to the problem of tax increases is important to me too and I am glad you planned the seminar. So, if you uh, grant the request, uh, especially the persuasive request in the beginning in a very positive and very optimistic manner, it will leave a good impact on the reader. But if you grant the request grudgingly, it will leave an unpleasant uh, impact on the reader. So, always uh, keep this fact in your mind that while saying yes, you have to uh, adopt a tone that is courteous, courteous that that give a pleasant sense, pleasant feeling to your uh, reader. So, answering persuasive request, what you have to think of is to use a very positive, pleasant tone and beginning your letter with a positive yes. Then, confirm the dates or details of the request and acceptance. To confirm you can include yes in the first paragraph and then you should follow the details in the next paragraph. You should repeat all the information, the subject, the venue, the date, everything that was uh, sent to you regarding the, uh, the, that persuasive re request into the, the middle of your letter so that you make a confirmation. After having done it, you sometimes need to give something extra. For example, sometimes somebody has asked you to uh, come to their program, to their any of their seminar or to any of their convocation or any other program and they offer you to give you some money for this or your expenditure. Suppose that you are already in that uh, near that venue or in that city. So, uh, you can uh, be extra generous by writing to them that that you do not need to uh, have that amount and you will be willing to come without those extra offer. So, let us look at this. Since I will be in Islamabad that week on other business, I shall be happy to speak to the convention on Monday, May 1 or Tuesday or May 2 at no expenses to your organization. So, this is something extra. And this was an answer to a persuasive request. We have been discussing how to answer persuasive request. So, basically it is the second type of letter, inquiry letter or direct request letter which I uh, told you in the beginning that there are basically three types of uh, uh, letters, letters seeking information and letter giving information and then the third type of, uh, type of letter was uh, refusing inquiry, saying no to inquiries. We discussed two types of letter. But before uh, we switch over to third type letter answering no, the fewer letters, obviously this letter will be written on inductive organizational plan. I want to have or read two letters, one inquiry letter seeking information and one inquiry letter giving information. So, we see that how these two letters have all the qualities of inquiry letters, direct request letters that we have been discussing so far. As I tell you quite often that you have to uh, study 
good letter as well as bad letter. So, this is an example of good letters. So, a few days ago, I visited the office of a large corporation in Karachi and was much impressed with the layouts of the various departments in which modular furniture is displayed. During my visit, I inquired about manufacture of such equipments and was told that you have an entire building in which various modular furnitures and equipments are displayed. I'd like very much to visit your exhibit building. I can come any time that is convenient for you. If I do not hear from you to the contrary, I'll plan to visit you on Thursday, March 8. So, if you look at this letter, this letter is a journal uh, inquiry uh, not, and obviously it's an appointment letter too. It seeks appointment. It has all the good qualities. The main ideas in the beginning, all the questions are, are uh, asked in the letter in a very uh, clear manner. The reader can easily understand the intention of the writer of this letter and in the end, in the closing, the date in action is requested and been made. So, when you receive such a letter, you also need to answer in the same clear manner, same definite and vivid manner. So, let's look at the answer of this letter. Dear Mr. Abed, I'm delighted to know that you are planning to visit us on Tuesday, March 8. The exhibit building is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. so you can come anytime. I thank you for your interest. So, you've seen that how smoothly the answer goes. Answering all the questions of the reader, giving, and, uh, giving a satisfactory answer to the reader and the reader feels that he has uh, uh, received uh, the answer to all his questions. We, in our business context, business situations, uh, we do want to grant every request made. We do want to write polite letter, positive letter, letter having good news, but Obviously, it is not always possible. In certain situation, we have to say no. As we will study in different types of letter, answering sometime order letter, we have to say no. We are out of stock. Or we have changed our line. Similarly, answering inquiry letters, we have to say no answering credit letter, uh, request for credit, we have to say no. Similarly, writing collection letters, we have to uh, write unpleasant messages, threatening legal action to the readers. So, in business, sometimes we do have to uh, write such letter. But whenever we have to say no, we should say no. But in that way that uh, it keeps the goodwill. It means that the reader feels that whatever action we have taken, whatever answer we have given to his request, that is, uh, that, uh, that answer uh, is quite fair. We were, uh, we were bound to give him this answer. So, whenever you are answering uh, no, take care of the, uh, of this uh, organizational plan that is inductive plan. As we discussed that, we use inductive plan in answering no. We always begin our letter with some buffer, buffer that statement that may aim at some agreement or some appreciation or some understanding, etc. You must know that we discuss different types of uh, buffer and we'll be discussing them. It's like a persuasive request. I mean, writing no, no is like writing a persuasive request in which we use the inductive plan. So, we begin our letter with a buffer saying no in the 
the beginning and then in the second place what we do is uh, we explain the reason for saying no that's very important i mean we want to be honest in every uh, situation so after saying after uh, uh, starting a letter with some buffer some pleasant statement uh, bringing our reader to a pleas pleasant positive frame of mind we give the reason uh, about the request before saying to no and then in the third uh, third part of the letter we uh, give the decision this decision is sometime implied or sometime very clear that depends uh, on the situation in different situation different decision are made so sometime we feel that an implied decision can be uh, sufficient because the answer is quite explicit but in some uh, situation we feel that we need to say something in words so whatever we feel uh, according to the situation should be explained and then we end the letter with a positive ending i mean this is very important we want to leave an impact on our reader in the end of our letter because he started it and he ended so the ending part of the letter should give us a positive feeling to the reader about the writer so whenever we are going to write this letter we are going to use the inductive plan so when your receiver has to see this you use this inductive plan and inductive plan never use negative word using negative word you cannot be allowed you cannot be given we cannot uh, open your account at this time etc so such uh, sentence uh, convey an unpleasant feeling to the reader about the writer so be very careful when you uh, deal with such letter let's look at some of the letters which say no while uh, refusing the request dear sir we are very sorry that your portrait has been damaged this rarely happens to malik photos i regret to advise that we cannot hold negative for a long period of time because we lack sufficient storage space therefore we will not be able to reprint your portrait i am however processing a refund in the amount of rupees 500 which you should receive within the next 6 weeks please accept our apologies for this problem as we greatly value your patronage with kindest personal regards if you look at this no letter this refusal letter this letter has a lot of apologies in it this letter has a lot of uh, negative words in it obviously uh, you have to say no because there may be in this situation in the situation in which this letter was written uh, you cannot accept the request of the uh, of the writer of this letter but the way the writer of this letter has used uh, apologetic language is not appropriate for a letter of refusal you have to use some buffer in the beginning you have to explain the situation you do explain the situation you give some negative or you give a uh, decision i mean refusing the request but not the way the writer of this letter has used these things in letter so if we revise this letter we can make it a better one for example Dear Mr Babu we are happy to hear that your family was so pleased with your portrait and we are sorry that one was damaged because our storage space is limited however all negatives are destroyed 10 days after an order has been filled a refund in the amount of rupees 500 is being processed and you will receive it soon please do let us know if there is anything else we can do for you so if you look at this letter now this letter serves the same purpose of refusing the request of the writer so far we have been discussing 
letters seeking information, letters giving information, and we have also discussed letter refusing information. These are all types of inquiry letters or direct request. I have made a difference between the inquiry letter and the direct request. Obviously, I mean, when you want to seek information, when you want to ask for some information about product or services, you write inquiry letter and when you uh, want somebody to take some action, you write direct request, right? So, here mostly the topic of inquiry letters that include all types of letters that we have discussed is almost over. But related to these inquiry letter or request letters, there are certain other types of letter which also uh, come under the heading of inquiry or journal request. For example, you write a letter to somebody seeking, uh, uh, asking somebody to recommend some someone, uh, I mean we call these let type of letter recommendation letter. For example, before hiring the services of uh, a certain person, you want to inquire about that person from his or her previous employer. Or maybe a person is still working in an organization and he has applied for some better position and he has uh, given the name of his uh, present employer as referees. So you write letters to the referee asking him to uh, give information about that uh, person who has uh, uh, applied for a certain job. So this is a recommendation letter. And this type of a letter also come under the same heading of direct request. Whenever you have to write a letter in which you seek recommendation about some person, you are using the same plan, direct plan. And you are explaining that why you are seeking for that information and you tell that for which position the person has applied for and obviously, you write in your message this very thing that the information whichever is passed on to you will, will remain under confidence. This is very important that whenever you are uh, seeking information regarding recommendation, you must give a sense of, uh, a sense of trust to your reader that whatever information he uh, will send will be will be kept close and uh, he won't be uh, answerable for that information because this type of information is very important and uh, you have in your business situation you will have to write a lot of letters uh, seeking information as well as giving information for recommendation purposes so whenever you have uh, to write your letter of uh, for uh, to uh, know about certain person, use the direct plan and uh, be very candid and ensure the reader that the information passed on to you will be uh, uh, will be kept in some confidence. Similarly, if as a uh, as a referee you receive a message from some other organization or some individual asking you to tell about somebody there are two possibilities one that to give a favorable recommendation you send you want to you want to write a letter of favorable recommendation and other is that you have some reservation in that case the letter is to be written uh, under that uh, uh, under that uh, inductive plan. So in the first place you are going to give a favorable recommendation to a person. So in that case you are going to write the letter in direct plan. So main idea in the beginning. In main idea tell the reader the name of the person you are recommending and then 
give a detail about the working of that person, how he works or used to work, about any certain feature, uh, any certain quality, any certain trait that can be helpful uh, to the reader of the letter, the person who has sought that information. So, this type of letter can be, uh, for example, uh, an answer to this type of letter can be like this. Uh, um, thank you very much for your inquiry regarding Mr. Naim. He has, he has worked with me for three years. I've always found him very hard working. He was ready to work in odd hours, especially weekends and Sundays. He can be set for any organization, this type of a letter of recommendation. So, when you have to write a letter which has a negative aspect. In that case, uh, sometimes you like to pass on that information to the reader and sometimes you like to hide that information. Similarly, you have other types of letter. For example, thank you letter. You want to write thank you letter. These type of letter are sometimes written to customers, sometimes they are written to your uh, employer, you, they have, you have received some position or you have, uh, you have been awarded, uh, awarded some title or some gift, etc. Again, these letters are written on good news plan, main idea in the beginning, then you explain, then you add something pleasant for reading to your reader and then you end your letter with a positive close. Sometimes you have to write letter of congratulations, letter of congratulations or also are of the same type using the same direct plan. So all these types of letter which are uh, either they are come under direct under uh, the heading of inquiry or they are under the heading of direct request are basically uh, serve the purpose of, uh, of people who want to seek some information, who want to give some information and these types of letter are very helpful in our business world. They help us in establishing a relationship with our reader. They help us in establishing goodwill with our reader. They help us in uh, creating goodwill within the organization as well as outside the organization. Basically, a good letter writer uh, develop his image with the reader, with the people around him, whether these people are within his organization or these people are outside his organization. A good writer, writer always keep in his mind all the qualities of good uh, letter writing. All those uh, tools that are necessary are used by him. He was always uh, willing to use all the tools. He, when he is uh, uh, chalking out his letters or messages, he is also thinking the uh, feelings of his uh, reader. How are they going to react to his uh, messages? This is very important. Unless you uh, think of your reader at the time of your uh, writing your messages, you cannot write positive message. You cannot improve your communication skill. You cannot become a good communicator. So to become a good communicator, you have to Think your reader in the first place and when you think uh, of your reader, you think of the viewpoint, you think of uh, his likes, dislike, you think of his complete mental filter. You make a, a, a mind, uh, uh, you make a picture of the uh, reader in your mind and then see that how your reader is going to react to your message. In every uh, letter, we emphasize on the organizational plan that at this moment you should 
adopt this uh, educate uh, this organizational plan and in this situation you should adopt this organizational plan these organization plan can be very helpful bringing them time and again again and again into into our lecture is to uh, to give you the sense of their importance to tell you that with the help of these organizational plan you can be very effective communicator so whenever you are going to write think of your purpose what is your purpose who are going to be your uh, audience and choose all the uh, information uh, uh, very carefully and after having gone through all these steps the most important is that choose the plan that is suitable to your requirement requirement whether it's a direct plan or indirect plan so when you have gone through all these thing your plan the only um, things left are you just revise your message edit your message and your messages bring the desired result that you want to achieve so today we have uh, discussed different aspect of inquiry and uh, direct request and some other topics which are also quite close to these type of letter now in the next lecture we'll switch on to the next topic so in the next lecture we'll be discussing some aspect of order letter how to place an order letter so with this i would say khuda hafiz i'll see you in the next lecture thank you very much